Thank you, Jesus, Lord. everybody i want to welcome everyone of us to join us in this wonderful wonderful hour of hope with pastor john justin and yet we should have had this yesterday but due to some technical problems we wouldn't uh, handle it yesterday so today i have come to just compensate hallelujah praise the lord otherwise thank you so much for joining us Please make a comment and share this video because I know it's going to be a blessing to all of us in the name of Jesus. Alo lo lo Alo lo lo Thank you so very much for all of you for joining us in this wonderful time and uh, welcome again this is Pastor John Justin Nyeto the general of the of Sabina Faith Ministries hallelujah I want to appreciate everyone who keeps coming on every Wednesday, but today is a Thursday. What a great day and an opportunity for us to share together the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This day is the day I take time to appreciate every one of you who keeps on blessing Tabernacle Faith Ministries. And I want to appreciate those who have always come to the aid of, of course, so Good Samaritan Outreach Welfare. And thank you so very much for your good, good contributions. May the Lord really bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to also announce to you that this Sunday is, is going to be a very special Sunday because it is uh, a Thanksgiving. We want to appreciate and thank God for the help He has so far given us right from the time. We had a lockdown up to this time. We want to appreciate God and say thank you very much for the things that you have done for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and praise Jesus. We let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Good and wonderful and excellent. In all your ways, you are so good. Thank you for the people that, Lord, you have blessed. Thank you for the testimonies that keep coming. Every day, every moment, every hour. And thank you, Jesus, for sustaining us. That all up to this time, my Father, you've been with us. To the glory of your name, we bless you. And Holy Spirit, come and minister to us. And come and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord so much for this time. I just want to see one or two or three people join me right now and we start our service. Hallelujah. So we want to see, I just want to see one or two or three people joining us right now and then we go on. Otherwise, thank you so very much. On Sunday, please do not miss out a very great time we are going to have with the Lord celebrating the help of God. And do not miss that service because it's going to be a great service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's start with the word of, with the word today. I want to share with you today. And the message or the theme of the message is in due season. Hallelujah. In due season. In due season. In due season. In due season. The Lord will bless you. In due season, the Lord will remember you. In due season. I want to believe God that 
This is your season. Hallelujah. This is a season of your breakthrough. This is your season of a new se- a new level. This is a new season of blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to, I want us to open up with a book of. Uh, I want us to open with a book of Luke chapter one. Thank you so much, Gilbert, for sharing this video. Thank God so much. May the Lord bless you. Luke chapter one, uh, Luke chapter one, verse five, and then uh, up to twelve. But up to twenty. But we sh- we may not reach up to there. Hallelujah! If you're there, please open your book, uh, your Bible, Luke chapter one, verse five, and up to twenty. The Bible says there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Hallelujah. And her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both, and they both were now well striking in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his Lord was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, praise God. We are in Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 20. But listen to verse 8, the Bible says, And it came to pass, executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. According to the custom of the priest's office, his Lord was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. <clears throat> and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fell, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for they, thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and you shall call his name John. And you shall have a joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Hallelujah. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor drink or strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The title of my message today is, In Due Season. Hallelujah. In due season, in due season, I have a conviction today that before the end of 2020, you are going to have your due season in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, the year 2020, some of us in the name of Jesus, we shall experience what I call due season, due season. We are living in due season. Some of you are already living in due season, but many of you before the end of this year, you will live in due season in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. This year will reward and honor those who are consistent. This year will not end before some of us shall be blessed beyond measure in the name of Jesus. This year God is going to honor those who have been waiting long enough on him. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Some of us have truly waited for God. Patiently waiting for God. But I'm telling you in your blessing, your miracle, your testimony shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of Luke begins with an interesting story of two characters. One of them, the Bible says his name was Zechariah. He was a priest and the other one was Elizabeth, his wife. Zechariah was a priest of God serving in the course of the temple. Hallelujah. And the meaning of his name is God remembers. 
or the one whom God remembers. That is the meaning of the name Zechariah. And he's married to a woman. Birth, which also means the daughter of us. Oh, God is my earth. Hallelujah. God is my covenant. So you look at these two people serving God. You need to understand that names are very important because, hey, they determine your destiny. But let us look at verse chapters, verse 6. The Bible says, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. And they were blameless. Blameless before who? Blameless before God. All of them were righteous people. Walking in all the commandments. Walking in all the ordinances as given to, Mo to Moses on Mount Sinai. They were blameless. Can you imagine? They were following all the Moses. This couple was so spiritual in God. This couple was so determined in serving God. They prayed every day. Oh God. They offered offerings every time they went in the presence of God. They loved their neighbors. They kept their Sabbath. The home was such a holy and sacred atmosphere. There was no infidelity. There was no wickedness. Nothing. Every area of their, way, of their lives was well with the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the Bible says they were blameless. According to verse 6. But listen, according to verse 7, there was a contradiction. The Bible says, and they had no child because <clears throat> that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well striking in years. Now listen to that kind of contradiction. So blameless, so righteous before God. They walked in the ways of God. <clears throat> but one thing that they had, they were childless. Hallelujah. That was a contradiction. It was a contradiction because they were under a Brahmic covenant. And anyone connected to a Brahmic covenant according to Deuteronomy chapter verse, chapter 28, verse 1 and 4, the Bible says that it comes, it come to it, it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thy God to serve and to do all his commandments. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all the blessings shall come to you if you shall hearken the Lord thy God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your kind, and the flocks of your sheep. Hallelujah, praise God. They were supposed to live in the blessing oh, of us. Supposed to have the blessing of the fruit of the womb. Seven, the Bible says they had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both, the Bible says they were in years. Hallelujah. Say to them preaching to you is in Hallelujah. Your miracle will come. Your challenge with us, Pentecostals, we are so much so judgmental. We have become so judgmental, you know, by what we see with our eyes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I was still telling you, have you ever been in that kind of scenario where you have served God faithfully? You have given in the house of the Lord. You have done everything. But still you find there is something missing in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why I was saying that many times, many people are so judgmental. When they see you, they look at you at, at face value. We judge ourselves. We judge others so quickly. And most times we do it based on what we see. 
When we see this sister, when we see this brother, he's not dressed so well. He's, you know, he doesn't have a B, C, D. Then you say, I think that sister, that brother is not blessed. Oh my God. But let me tell you something. That's the lie of the devil. I want to tell you something. One day I was invited to preach somewhere. And when I was there, they asked me, where is the man of God? I said, I'm the one who is supposed to come and preach. Hallelujah. They looked at the size. They looked at the small John. But we thank God that out of that, out of what came out of the message that I preached, is the one that proved, to th that proved them wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we Pentecostals look at people, when we see them going through trials, when we see them going through persecutions, when we see them going through afflictions, when we see them going through troubles, when we see them going through pains, many times we easily come to a conclusion that there must be a spiritual violation somewhere. That is what we do. Maybe brother so-and-so is not living right. Maybe sister so-and-so is not living right. The disciples of Jesus fell in the same kind of deception in John chapter 9. When they saw a blind man from birth and they asked Jesus, Oh, who sinned? Is it the father of the mother or this man? And Jesus told them, No, it is not because the Lord should be glorified in this problem. Hallelujah. Praise God. Of course, that those who are sin. But many times, when we see people going through challenges, it is not because they have sinned. It is because sometimes troubles, afflictions, and pains could be a sign of great destiny in God. God could be preparing such people oh, for blessings ahead in the future. The Bible says these people, Zechariah and then Elizabeth, the Bible says they were blameless. In the eyes of God, they were blameless. But in the opinion of men and themselves, they were buried. Hallelujah. In the opinion of Zechariah and, and, his, and his wife, we are barren, but in the eyes of God, oh, something doesn't the word of God barren. But why are these people barren? sometimes we are doing right, sometimes when, when we are serving God faithfully, there could be also a barren season, there could be a barren problem in our lives. Hallelujah. But that's that doesn't mean that truly that we have failed or God is not in control. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that when we have a barren se se season in our lives that we are in trouble. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Rabaka shaka talaba. They were blameless. Eyes of God. These people were blameless. But in the eyes, in the and in their own opinion, say truly, we are barren. Hallelujah. But Paul tells us in Galatians, he told the church in Gala in Galatia in Galatians chapter six, verse nine, and let us not be weary, hallelujah, in well doing, for in due hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, and we are in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's what the Bible says. Do not be weary in doing well, for in due season our God will heal us, our God will bless us. Give us a harvest. Hallelujah. In due season, much as Elizabeth and her, the husband seem not to be getting what they wanted, but the Bible says in due season, time came when the Lord, house of God, don't stop supporting the work of God. Do not stop 
you know, praying for your pastor. Don't stop standing for God even when things are burning. Don't quit evangelism. Don't quit the work of God. Continue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In this season, do not give up. Because in due season, God will bless you. The fruit and the blessing of righteousness may never be rewarded immediately. But in due season, God will honestly remember you and reward you in the name of Jesus. So in the case of Zechariah, the Bible says they were blameless. They were childless. But God had a due season reward for them. Hallelujah. They had a due season for them. A due season reward for them. In verse 8 the Bible says, And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Oh, while he was executing the priest's office before God in the order of his course. While he was serving God, the Bible says, and the Lord fell on him to go in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This was the time now for Zechariah. There were many priests there doing different things. And at this time, they didn't have the indwelling the Holy Spirit, the, the indwelling Holy Spirit at that time. So the only thing they would do is to cast lots. The Bible says, this time, the Lord fell in Zechariah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This time, it was Zechariah's time. It was his divine timing. Oh, praise God. It was his Lord. The Lord didn't fall on his neighbor. The Lord did not fall on his somebody around there. It did not fall on anyone but on him. Why? Because... It was an appointed time. It was the time for reward. Hallelujah. It was to keep that date with his destiny. On that day, the Bible says, the Lord fell. It fell on Zechariah. It had been falling on others. It had been falling on other people. But destiny was calling. And this time, it was Zechariah's time. Hallelujah. Because it was his visitation. Oh, sister, my brother, my sister, my sister, my brother, my uncle, my auntie, whoever you are. Hey, you could have been so blameless, serving God in righteousness, serving God in every capacity. And it seems like you've not been having any breakthrough. The Bible says this time the Lord fell on this man called Zechariah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it was his day of visitation. His angel was coming. His angel had already come. Oh, I see many of us, our lords are coming supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Before the end of this year, your visitation will be there. It will be your turn. Hallelujah. Just like Zechariah, it is your turn. It is your turn for God to bless you. It is your turn for God to change every situation around you. It is your turn in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the Bible says it was to burn incense. The reason why a lot of people don't see God visiting them is because they have no lot in the house of God. You begin to pray, you begin to ask God, and you say, Lord, why is it that I am not blessed right from January to, to July? Why is it that I am not receiving my blessings? The Bible says, Zechariah was burning incense. Are you burning your incense? Are you doing your lot in the house of God? What are you doing? What have you so far done for God right from the time we had the pandemic? What have you done? And then, Lord, I know. What have you done? Hallelujah. The Bible says, Zechariah, he had a lot 
in the house of God. His work was to burn incense. His work was to serve in that specific area. Whatever lot is in your house, in the house of God, you've got to do it. What is your lot? Maybe God wants you to pray for that pastor. Maybe God wants you to support the work of God. Hallelujah. Maybe you are God, your, your Lord could be sweeping the, the church when it's now, there are no people there, but you could be going there cleaning the church. That could be your Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What about evangelism? The question is, what is your Lord? What are you doing for God? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Stop the gossip. Do the work of God. Stop the gossip. Do the work of God. Do something. Hey, do not end this year before you have done something good for God. You need to serve God. You need, you need to give in the house of God. You need to support the work of God. I thank God that on Sunday we shall be having a great time of thanksgiving where we shall give God our offering and we say, Lord, thank you for the far you have brought us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he was doing his Lord. Why? Because it was while he was doing his Lord that Zechariah received his reward. Hallelujah. While Zechariah was doing his Lord, that's when God gave him a miracle. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lot of people want visitation, but they don't want to serve. A lot of people want visitation, but they don't want to give. A lot of people want visitation for God. The only thing they know is, God, I have a right. I need a visit from you. Sometimes that's not how God works. The Bible says, Zechariah. I believe from the time he was still a youth to the time he had all, you know, he was about over 70, 85 years. <clears throat> this time, as he was doing his Lord, the reward came. If you want a reward from God, if you want a visitation, do something for God, and God will do something for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke chapter, I mean in Psalms 127, 3 and 5, the Bible says, Lord, children are an inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of the mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Hallelujah. So children are a heritage. Are the heritage, are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And the reward comes after work. Hallelujah. That is what happened with Elijah, I mean with Zechariah and Elizabeth after work, and then God blessed them. Then as he stepped in as usual, the Bible says he met an angel, and the angel's name was called Gabriel. And Gabriel means the man of God or the one who stands in the presence of God. According to verse 19, the Bible says, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto you and show you these glad tidings. Hallelujah. So Gabriel comes in and then he tells him, Zechariah, your prayers are answered. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Your answer, your prayers are answered in due season. Zechariah was given an answer. Hallelujah. I must declare over your life today that whatever kind of prayer that you have prayed, may the Lord answer. The Lord has already answered you in the name of Jesus. You have been so faithful in serving God. You've been so faithful in doing the work of God. You've been so faithful being close to God. But I'm here to tell you one thing. Your prayers answered. Look at Zechariah. How? Because he was an 
age. The Bible says he was was striking in age. Not 60 years. Not 70 years. I'm talking about 85 years and above. <clears throat> Hallelujah. They were blameless, the Bible says. They were well advanced in age. They spent years beyond the veil asking God for a child. And suddenly after many years, when they got to a point where they say, I think God will not bless us. I think this is not going to happen. I think because of our biological cloak. They said, I don't think we shall have this miracle. I don't think we shall have a redemption time. But listen to me. Many of you have given up on your dreams. Many of you have given up on your hopes and, as and aspirations. Many of you have given up on the plans, the visions that you had from the beginning of this year. But I must, I must tell you that even though it looks like nothing is going to happen, even though things seem to be very tough, I must tell you that in the name of Jesus, the angel of the Lord is coming with an answer. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the angel said, your prayers are answered. Even when Zechariah did not believe in that, the Bible says, hey, when he was in the Holy of Holies, instead, Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. I am the one who stands in the presence of God. I was an eyewitness when Sarah conceived when she was 90 years. I witnessed Hannah. Oh, when she did not have a child, I witnessed her in Shiloh. And how God did it for him, for her. What about Manoah? Hallelujah. So here, the angel gives Kariah the assurance while he was in the Holy of Holies. And what happened is that God became annoyed. And then he just shut his mouth. He became dumb. Hallelujah. God shut his mouth because of his unbelief. Because that unbelief could injure the process of the miracle. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let me tell you something. When God has decided to bless you, when it is your due season, nothing will stop God from doing miracles. Not even you will stop God from answering and blessing your life. If you begin to develop unbelief, God will shut your mouth because he has to prove to you that he is the God of miracles. He's the God who answers by fire. He's the God who will always bless bless those who trust in him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So here, when, when Zechariah thought, I, I am eight years, I'm 85 years, I can no longer bear a child because of the biological clock. But God said, no. At the time you have, you are giving up, at the time you are surrendering, is the time that is my best time that is the best time i will always do my miracles god does things after we have surrendered after we are almost failing after we have said it is impossible that is the time god comes and always blesses us hallelujah look at the time of the of intervention from god oh it was at the time when they were well stricken in age not at the time when they had the vigor. Not at the time when they had the sap. No. Not at the time when they had the vitality. Not at the time when they had the potency. But God allowed everything to dry up. God allowed everything to fail in the time of Zechariah, in the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Their energy had dried up. My God, my God. But listen to me, many times 
when God is in, interested in you, when God wants to bless you, when God wants to intervene in your life, hey, He allows sometimes conditions to condition you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Sarah. Look at Abraham. And let me tell you something. God won't intervene as long as there are controversies between his hand and human might. God will not come into your problem, come into helping you until he sees that no human hand is there. Because when God blesses you, when you have just called your auntie, when you've just called your uncle, when you have just called your mother, your father, hey, you will think it is your mother who has blessed you. But he will first disconnect you from everything that you trust until you come to that point when you say, God, you alone are my providence. You alone are my supply. You alone are everything. That is when his hand of provision comes. Hallelujah. He never loves mingling things. He wants what they call clear-cut glory for himself. So he allows you to pass the ability. He allows you to go through those kind of things. And then from there, he comes up and says, Behold, this is the miracle of the season. In due season, I am rewarding you. Hallelujah. In due season, I will bless you. In due season, I will heal you. In due season, I will set you free. So that you will never say, it was my strength. It was my ability. It was my uncle. It was my pastor. No, it will be, this is the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the way he did it. Jesus did it with Lazarus. He made sure that Lazarus was dead four days, properly dead, so that nobody would say that man had fainted. No, it was the time at the time when he was smelling, the body was smelling. Then Jesus said, That's the best time I always intervene. So that no man, no woman takes the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I am preaching from, from the depth of my heart that in due season, God will bless you. God will lift you. God will sustain you. God will never abandon you. God will never ignore you. Yes, you blameless. Like Zechariah, the Bible says they were so blameless. They were so committed to the things of God. But they did not have a child. But in due season, hallelujah, wait for your due season. Your season is coming. And your season will not, 2020 will not go by without that due season. There is a season of your blessing that is coming. There is an open door that God has to you. There is something that God has already done in the spiritual realm to do for you, to bless you. Why? Because in due season, He will bless you. Hallelujah. On Sunday, as I say, we're having the thanksgiving service. We want to thank God for the fire He has brought us. We want to give to Him. We want to... Offer him offering and sacrifice and tell God, you have been so good to us. You have not allowed the enemy to defeat us. You have never allowed the waters to swallow us. You have not allowed the fires to burn us. We are here to praise you and to glorify your name. In your season, I must tell you, God is going to bless you. God is going to use you. And God is going to turn around your situation for you are good. Because your season has come. And God our Father will never allow you to struggle in life. Hallelujah. He is an indomitable God. He is insurmountable. He is unchallengeable. He can never be defeated. Why? In your season, He will bless you. 
Thank you so much for watching me. This is Pastor John Justin Anieto, the lead pastor of Tabernacle Faith Ministries. And I must tell you, thank you to share this video and please make comments. And on Sunday at 10 p.m., I mean 10 a.m., I want you to join me. It's going to be a great service. Hallelujah. I had to compensate today because yesterday I couldn't come live due to some technical problems. But I'm so glad that today you have been there watching. And may God bless you in your, in your season. And I believe that this is your season of miracles. This is your season of blessings. This is your season. Hey, from the seventh month, you are going to see great miracles, great testimonies of God's goodness. Not because COVID-19 is God in, in your situation. Hallelujah. Do not say, I have served God enough. Do not say, I have given God enough. Do not say, I have sacrificed enough. No. In your season, your miracle will come. And when it comes, it will overshadow all the troubles you have gone through. Hallelujah. I thank God so much for you. Thank you so much for being always our added viewer and always being there. Whenever I come live, please may join us and together pray that God to another level. Hallelujah. Please share this video. And also, please make comments. Play it as a watch party. That the God of heaven in this season will bless you and me. In Jesus' name we pray. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Now and forevermore. Amen and amen. I say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are watching from. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you and favor begin to locate you this week. Healing is your portion and deliverance shall be your portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Oh, thank you, Father.